Hi, this is Doug Nichols from the West Coast Fencing Archive. Welcome to another edition of Tales from the Archives. Well, here's what happened. I was uh, at a fencing tournament, and I'd had my brochures. It said Ted Katzoff Fencing Master, and my cards, Ted Katzoff Fencing Master. And I had my students, and I'd already proven myself as a coach and teacher because I had some very successful students up to that point. Mm -hmm. But here's how naive I was. I used that term Fencing Master. And I was approached at that tournament by a couple of gentlemen uh, in coats and ties, uh, who, one of whom... Uh, was Jean-Jacques Joulet, who was the president of USFCA at the time, mm -hmm. uh, and the gentleman who at that time was the secretary treasurer. And uh, they were very polite, very gentlemanly. Uh, <laughs> uh, Coach Katzoff, boy, were they careful about that. Mm -hmm. Or Mr. Katzoff, I can't remember. Uh, congratulate you. You've done very, very well with your students and following your progress, and we really think you've done extremely well. But we notice... <laughs> <laughs> that on your cards, it says fencing master. Um, you know, the term fencing master is the same as like MD or PhD in a subject. Did you go through a process to actually earn that title? And I also at that time enrolled in the very first class, in which one? Greg Masiales, uh, Carlos Uribe, uh, Don Andrews, Dean Hinton, among other uh, luminaries, myself uh, included, and that we all went through this. Uh, fencing uh, coaches school. I said, how can I do this without having to travel to New York, which I was not about to do. And they said, well, there's a program at San Jose State University, which is being run by uh, Maestro uh, William Gobbler, and we have a reciprocal relationship with him. So if you pass his tests, uh, then essentially you've passed ours. So Dr. Gogler, it was, he was an art history professor, but he knew something from fencing, and he'd taken lessons from Aldo Nani, the great Aldo Nani. Yeah. So he tried to teach us perfectly classical Italian technique uh, as based on history. Very intense training, almost starting from the beginning, how to do fencing lessons and how to organize fencing lessons. Uh, the thing that I found amusing, also very challenging, was that it was in the classical or traditional uh, Italian methodology, including the Italian numbering system, mm -hmm. using the Italian weapons, and I'd been, I'd grown up in the Franco-Hungarian method, okay, sure. with Mel and everybody else. Okay, so I had to reorient my brain. So his favorite thing was to bring in uh, uh, Xerox, well in those days were actually bibliograph, which was amazing, um, copies of texts from the 13th century in Italian, you know. And I was the only one who could barely, like, kind of struggle through it. Everybody else is looking at, what's this? It's, but I thought it was great. Very intense weekends going up to San Jose and, like, eight hours a day for three days on a weekend, back and forth. In the meantime, I had to read a book on you know, his methodology. The only book available at that time was in German. Fortunately, I had a very good friend, uh, a colleague, mm -hmm. uh, Phyllis Elliott, who could speak German as well as fluent. And basically, as she translated sentence by sentence, so I could study. And uh, then I had to uh, take, uh, I had to write a thesis, which I did. It was sent back to me because I had inadvertently done it in the Franco-Hungarian. I had to change all the numbers and, and you know things of that sort. Sent it back and was accepted. However, I will say in his favor that uh, he he taught a, a, a full array of possibilities and, and actions. And uh, cocky us in those days, we'd say, "Why? Why would we learn this? We will never use this." And now I find actions from that class are very applicable to currently, and stuff that we thought was the be all and end all is gone by the wayside. Yeah. So I'm really happy that I was in that program. Light and four. For instance, yeah. yeah, there's all that opposition and closeout stuff that we all learn. And why are we learning this? We would say to each other, you know, yeah. oh, whatever. Oh yeah, but. It's all current now. Yeah. Yeah. Just watch all the, all the top guys. They're, they're always stop hitting and closing out. And, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. It's... Uh, then I had to take a written examination, um, tactic, technique, and history, and all three weapons, mm -hmm. because I was going for the master's diploma. 
Um, I really, I really stuck my neck out, you know, and gave myself a real, real challenge there. And that was read by uh, Lawler and his associate, and he had to pass that. He had to get a minimum grade. Uh, and if you got the minimum grade, then you would go up to San Jose and do a practical and oral examination before the Board of Review. Uh, there were three of us who were going for the master's degree. Um, Peter Bouchard. Oh, very good. Uh, and Ralph Somm. Ralph Somm was uh, Professor Gago's protege and was going to take over the program after he retired. Mm -hmm. And of course, Peter has gone on to become a very important voice as well as an instructor uh, in American fencing in general. And we're still you know, very good friends. Um, so we were the first class, and uh, Ralph got a 92, mm -hmm. and he should have because he was a protege. And I, I got an 85, and Peter got an 84, so I'm always kidding Peter about that. It's, it's great that I, that I learned all that stuff. I didn't think so then. So that's how I became a true professional. I went through the process mm -hmm. to get the diploma, and uh, so I am a certified fencing master, recognized as such by USFCA, also by the International Academy of Arms. I have a diploma from uh, as well.